All right, we're live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Friday live stream. Today is Friday, October 3rd. We're going to be talking about the two Delta CRJs that collided at LaGuardia two days ago. So I got all the data together. I got some videos. We're going to listen to ATC recordings. And I'm going to, as somebody that's flown in and out of LaGuardia uh, for many years, I kind of have a, feel like I have a unique perspective. So we're going to review all this and uh, talk about a little bit about what happened and maybe hopefully learn some lessons from it. So Appreciate if you're watching live, please like, subscribe. I'm so close to that 100,000, but yet so far. So if I could get a couple more subscribers, that would help. All right, first, let's start off by talking about flight radar here. Let's show this first picture. So this is by flightradar24.com, shows the initial route. And we're going to go into this a little more in depth here on my uh, iPad because I'm going to pull in. Hopefully this works. And by the way, I'm on OBS and there's a new update. And so if I'm having any type of problems, I apologize. So just bear with me. But there's no need to go into, here's the flight numbers, right? There one was, uh, they're both Endeavor. So it's a Delta CRJ 900s. It's a regional jet for um, subsidiary. It's as Endeavor. It's like a sister airline that's underneath Delta. But anyways, it was 5407 and 55, 5155. One was taxiing in, one was ta taxiing out. That's the, the main thing that you need to know. So let's watch here. So one came off of Bravo and cut over. One was taxiing Alpha. And I'll explain, I'll show that way more in depth here. Uh, in a moment. So let's watch the flight radar shows this, how they um, connect here. Not ideal as you watch them. So right here, as you watch this, this is the data showing. Uh, yeah, not good. Then they basically stop right there. Uh, let's review some pictures first. First thing that I notice when I look at this, uh, the first thing I saw and I noticed that when I saw this is I go, this airplane on the left must have been moving very, very fast. Uh, so fast, in fact, I mean, look at this at the top. I mean, that's a shattered windshield. The the nose and the cone of the CRJ is, uh, yeah, is completely destroyed. I mean, for a ground thing, that either made perfect contact and did more damage than it looks, but my opinion was this plane was going very fast. And then you look at the picture below, I, I'm getting some conflicting reports, but I mean, that right there looks like half the wing is nearly ripped off. And that to me, that's crazy the fact that you know you never know that's where the fuel is stored uh, in the crj you know that you're gonna have fuel in the wings so the fact that that didn't rip off and start a fire like that could have actually been uh, a lot worse but noticing here you know i see these skid marks on the left it looks to me like uh, i thought at first maybe the brakes were hit i think maybe they hit the brakes but just the turn of the plane hitting the the other plane is um what caused that? Uh, you know, real quick, something I figured I'd mention, and I'll talk about this in a moment when it comes to LaGuardia, but type in the chat if you know what the speed limit is on the ground for an airplane. Uh, you know, in the sky, a lot of people know to below 10,000 feet, your speed limit is 250. What is the speed limit on the ground for an airplane? What's the max speed limit? I'm just curious if you know, type it in the chat right now if you know. And if you're watching after the live, just type it without looking and then tell me what you think. All right, you ready for the answer? You're probably not gonna believe this. There is no speed limit on the ground. Can you believe that? It's like one of those things that's discretion, right? Now, if you have an FAA watching, he could technically maybe do something, but the reality is it's supposed to be a discretion on the speed limit. And so when we watch this video that we're gonna watch here in a second, it looks to me like he was moving very, very fast. And again, I'm not trying to, to knock anybody. I'm just observing what I see. Um, let's see, this is a passenger here saying that, and there's a picture of the planes. All right, let's watch the video from inside. Apparently, this was a time lapse. Uh, let's take a look and see um, as we watch. Somebody was filming right there. Ouch. And yeah, all that glass. And that's, that is a hard hit. And it's very hard to see what the, where the, the wing is, is ripped off. But um, yeah, solid contact ripped off, obviously going to be out of service. This is going to be under NTSB investigation. Now let's go back and listen to, uh, the ATC audio. Cause I want to show this to you real quick as we go. And hopefully I can pull this up after the fact. Forty ground. Good evening, Deborah. 5047, Golf Bravo. Deborah, 5047, we're going to go on taxi. Bravo, Mike, the lane 12. Bravo, Mike. Okay, so the one, the airplane coming in, right, gets taxi. Now you can follow along here on the green line. This is, they just came off here on runway four. And as they, um, let me see if, sorry, if this is not pulling up. 
So as as you can see, the um, runway, they landed runway four, they ex exited golf here, and they get their taxi in instructions that include this green line here. It's golf, or I'm sorry, it's Bravo Mike to lane 12 all the way down here. Now, they were cleared all the way into lane 12. So I can safely say that the inbound aircraft is like for sure uh, not at fault. Now, here's where things get tricky. Now, listen to the outbound clearance of this Delta plane. Air 5155 ground, 13 taxi, Alpha Echo, hold short of four at Mike, give way to company. Alpha Echo and uh, hold short of four at Mike, give way to the company on uh, 213. Okay, so this is <laughs> this is where I have kind of an uh, an issue here. This is a tricky one. This, it, you know, when I first heard this, I initially thought, okay, the ATC made a mistake. The more I listened to it, I realized it's one of those things that it, it it reminds me of, I don't know if anybody remembers this, but back when eBay first started, there was, people were selling a picture of a PlayStation uh, online. And they basically, what they said is, uh, PlayStation 2, it says picture below. And so they're saying the picture, they're selling the picture of the PlayStation, right? Pictured versus picture is that much of a difference where they were selling a picture instead of an actual PlayStation, right? So long story short, what I'm getting at is the way this clearance is read, and I'm going to play this one more time. Listen to this closely. Air 5155 ground, 13 taxi, Alpha Echo, hold short of four at Mike, give way to company. Alpha Echo, hold short of four at Mike, give way to company. So I don't, as a pilot, I really don't like this clearance. This is, to me, seems as if like LaGuardia is very, um, you know, LaGuardia is no, let me just say this. Every time I've flown into LaGuardia, it can be a complete cluster, you know what. Uh, you get in there, there's one, at least I think, I don't know if there still is, there was when I would fly in there years ago, there was one ground frequency and there'd be about 18 planes all trying to call at once. And I mean, these guys are new, you know, New York, thick skin, and they're yelling at you, look, what are you ground? I'll call you. And they just yell and yell and yell. And I mean, you're just trying to get a call in to taxi. And it's just like mm, 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 people stepping on each other. That means too many, uh, two people are trying to call ATC at once and nothing goes through. So it is already high, like high stress, high strung. The thing is, at this time of night, this does not sound very busy. It didn't sound that chaotic. And the fact is, if I had heard that clearance too, I would have expected Mike to be further down. But the way he read it was Alpha Echo short of four at Mike give way to company. The way he read it seems very like, mm, it, it, it's, it's dicey, but I still think it's correct, unfortunately, for the pilots. Uh, you know, the other thing is the way he read it back. If we listen to that one more time, let's see if I can uh, play this back one more time. Alpha Echo and uh, hold short of four. It might give way to the company uh, to one three. So remember I was talking about this inflection. It's, it's it's one of those ones where it's like a comma can make the difference or picture versus picture below. He read it back. Alpha Echo short of four at Mike give way to company. That to me is the correct readback. The issue here is they were assuming, this is kind of, I guess you would call confirmation bias or when you get just too comfortable in a situation that the way it was read, I would th initially think the same thing. Hold short at Mike of four. When you throw in the runway there, you're thinking it's all the way on the other side. Uh, you know, and so this is what happens. And so the thing is he read it there. This is why I am a big proponent of, you know, let's say these guys, they probably fly in and out of this airport all the time. It's night. They're trying, you know, they may have had a long day. They're like, man, let's just get going. They're on their way. This is one of those things where it all lines up to have an accident. And, you know, and I guess technically I don't, well, an accident is defined as severe damage to the aircraft, which this, in this case would uh, qualify it as an accident. And so what I think what happened here is if you look here on alpha, the, the airplane is trying to taxi here on alpha and the FO on the right side of the plane is probably heads down. Heads down means he's running some checklist. He's either doing the taxi checklist or he's getting numbers, he's doing something. So usually what we do is captains will tell me, hey, and as, as long as we're making turns, we don't do anything. We don't, we don't go heads down until we're on a straightaway. So they were on a straightaway here. And the fact that, um, the, you know, it seems like the, the FO's heads down, so maybe he missed it. I don't know how the captain missed it off the right side as he's coming. I mean, maybe he just, it was too far or he looks to his left. Uh, either way, this is why, you know, when I've moved to the 777, we slow the plane down so much. 
And, you know, there's a couple other people have talked about this because, you know, when you make a wrong turn in the triple seven, not that we'd take the triple seven to LaGuardia, but you make a wrong turn on triple seven, you could get in a situation where you have to get towed away and you can't, you know, you can't even uh, get out of your, your wrong turn. I think that, that this is to show, man, you know, for all the pilots out there, uh, you know, you can't get too complacent. This is what happens. You're going fast. You're at night, you're there and you had the clearance. I, and unfortunately for these pilots, I think that, um, you know, that the, the clearance was correct, although it was very misleading. And I would assume some changes would would come out of here because of this, because I think that he should have just had him hold short a mic, in my opinion, let the plane pass, give this way, and then continue on. This whole thing to taxi him all the way down at this busy airport just shows it's it's LaGuardia. They're just used to being fast and trying to cram everything in. Uh, you know, and I just, I, I kind of disagree with this, but this is another good point. This is why you always stay off your cell phone. You stay off, you do anything wrong. You don't break sterile cockpit because guess what? Both of these, uh, both of these, these, uh, cockpit voice recorders are getting pulled. And I guarantee you, even the plane that was cleared in, right. That was not in the wrong. They were cleared all the way into 12. Let's say they're breaking sterile cockpit, or let's say the guy was on his phone. Let's say the captain pulled out his phone to text his wife. Hey, I'm, I just landed or something like that. Right. Which is totally illegal. If he does that, this whole thing could get shifted onto him. And, and I can't tell you how many investigations and people, they look for reasons. They will pull the data on your phone. They will pull, they, they can get warrants for that. So this is a good reminder that you could be completely in the, the right and still end up getting in trouble because you make another mistake that wasn't even related to you, but they'll still try and pin it on you. So I think some, hopefully some good will come out of this. If you would ask me if they get fired, I would say if they didn't break sterile cockpit or they didn't, uh, you know, use their phone or do something that was like clearly unintentionally safe, I think, no, I think you could keep your job and you could come around to it. But, um, you know, that's, you know, that, that's going to be like for the airline to decide. And I guess technically the FAA, if they take any action, but that, that is a great reminder why you have to, to do that. I would say, you know, these staffers, these ATC people are understaffed. They need help with this. Like this is, you know, this is they're understaffed and, you know, they're overworked. I think that this is a huge signal that like, wow, we need extra help um, with this kind of stuff. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If there's anything else that you, you think that I missed, I'd be interested to know. I just want to get this live stream. No Big Mac, no ads, just a good old fashioned review. And I, I must say, it's nice to do an accident review for uh something where nobody was killed because you know 2025 that was unfortunately uh not the case so i'm really glad that uh um i don't know i'm glad that this didn't turn out as bad but hopefully we learned some lessons so i appreciate you guys everyone remember to like and subscribe hype up this video i really need it and until next